Greetings guys, gals, non-binary pals, and welcome back to another video. Today I am bringing you something that I haven't done in a little while, um, which is looking at some stuff that some nice guys say, because <laughs> it's always a bit of a nightmare, um, and I always like to keep updated with this, just... I don't know why. I guess I just like torturing myself. And in that process, I like torturing all of you as well. So you are welcome. I know that you've all just been sitting there dying, dying to see what the nice guys of the internet are saying, right? And now you get to find out. You're so welcome. But before we do get into it, I would like to take a moment to say a massive thank you to today's patron of the day, Lily. I appreciate you so, so much. Thank you so much for joining. Um, I hope that you enjoy this video. And if anyone else would like to become a patron, you go to patreon.com slash savvy cat or click the top link in the description. It starts at as little as one pound a month um, and you get access to early content, bonus content, and special little projects that I am working on at the moment. So I appreciate it. Anything helps. Yeah, all right, let's get into the nice guys. <laughs> this is just a text that says, why don't you want to date me? Do I trigger bad memories? Did I do something or act wrongly around you? Do you just see me as a brother? Or do you secretly hate me because I'm too nice to you or something? And they just replied, I just do not have any romantic feelings towards you. I do not hate you. I just do not have any romantic feelings towards you. Like, I love that someone just showing disinterest leads to them being like, am I too nice? Is that what it is? I'm too nice to you? That's never the reason. That'll never be the reason. I'm not breaking up with you or stopping seeing you because you are too nice to me. That's just something you all made up. Like maybe it'll happen once in a blue moon, but that is not a common reason for someone to stop seeing you. Believe it or not, we actually want people to be nice to us. Yeah, we kind of want people to be nice to us. We want to date decent people. Uh, and if you are someone who's asking, was I too nice for you? You're probably not a very nice person. And it was all a facade to trick them into dating you for longer. So they dodged a bullet. Boys, if you're not interested, then just say that. Women, I'm not interested. Boys, let me change that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it works in multiple ways too. You're like, I'm gay. And they're like, only because you've not been with the right guy, I will throw up on you. <laughs> like, don't. Don't. Men being like, just say if you're not interested. And then you say you're not interested and they come up with every reason in the book why you should be. Like, oh my God, it's, it's ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. I had an experience recently and I tweeted about this, I think, um, a couple weeks back, I was just walking to the gym, right? And this like guy showed up next to me. I have my fucking noise canceling headphones on, blasting music, by the way. So obviously did not want to be interrupted. Um, and then he came and just like tapped me and starts walking in step with me and being like, I think you're really pretty. What are you doing? And I'm like, I try to come up with every reason under the fucking sun why I want him to leave me alone. He's like, where are you from? I'm like, oh, I'm from New Zealand. How long are you here for? Oh, I'm only here for a week. Uh, and then I'm going back home. Oh, you staying around here? No, I'm just out for a walk at the moment. What are you doing while you're here? I'm just spending time with family. My grandma's really sick, so I'm just spending time with her. I'm just out for a walk at the moment. Oh, well, you should come to this place with me. And then it's like, no, sorry, I'm not very interested. Okay, well, let me get your Instagram. I don't have social media. Can I get your number? I don't have a British phone number. Let me take you out. I don't want to do that. I don't go out with strangers. I'm not trying to be a stranger. But can you please leave me alone? <laughs> like fucking hell. I've said in so many words that I don't, I'm not interested. Surely you can tell that by my demeanor, by the way I'm speaking, by the way I've given you so many reasons to leave, right? And then fucking finally, I said, no, I'm not interested in those words three separate times before he finally got the message and like got really huffy. And I'm like, that's, I don't, mm. so I like crossed the road, hung back and turned a corner because like, it's genuinely when they look like they're mad, it's kind of scary, you know? W women have been like attacked for less, killed for less, honestly. It's so scary. They're like, why don't you just say no? Because it's dangerous to just say no. And when you try to say no to people, they're like, but 
let me just do it anyway. Fucking leave me alone. Go away. Oh my god. Legitimately, like, I'm only in the country for a week. I'm here with my family looking after my sick grandma. I don't give my number out to strangers and I'm not on social media. And he's still here, like, but I'm not trying to be a stranger. Fuck off, bro. Anyway, I just had to share, get that off my chest because I'm still pissed about it. This person had a conversation with a high school crush at the grocery store. When I was in eighth grade, we had to do a square dancing for PE and I danced with this girl named blank. I don't remember the dance, but we had to hold hands and I fell head over heels in love with her. She was really out of my league, so I never had the courage to approach her, but I used to have vivid fantasies about dating her, marrying her, and having a life with her. She moved the first year in high school, so I thought I'd never see her again. I saw her at Safeway yesterday. She looked exactly the same, and I had to say hello. I asked her if she was blank, and she said yes, and I said she probably doesn't remember me, but we went to middle school together, and she said that she remembered dancing with me in PE. I was so stoked that I went into telling her how much I was in love with her, but too afraid to approach, and she always seemed so sweet, and she was still beautiful. I said that my silly schoolboy had dreams of marrying her and having kids, and I even had the names picked out. I asked her what she was doing now, and she's getting her master's in architecture, and it turns out the office she works out of is right down the street from my work. She said she had to go and I asked for her number and she gave it to me and she said maybe we could catch up with a group of friends sometime. I was so stoked and we said goodbye. About 10 minutes later, I thought of the names I wanted to name our kids because it was based on a book we were reading at the time, ELA. So I FaceTimed her to tell her. She didn't answer and I got this text. Hi, I'm sorry, but this whole encounter was really intense for me. I wish you well, but please don't contact me again. I tried to call her on regular phone this time and I think she blocked me. I saw my girl cousin later last night and showed her because I don't want blank to get the wrong idea. I'm just a normal guy. I was thinking about maybe just stopping in at her work and explaining things again. My cousin said that text was as blunt as it could have been without using swear words. She said I was fine to say hello. I was weird when I told her about my daydreams and I was certified asshole when I tried to FaceTime her 10 minutes later and she didn't even have the words for what I'd be if I'd stopped by her office. I would like to get a second opinion. My God, the audacity, bro. Imagine going up to someone you went to school with and just telling them this like fantasy you had about them and then trying to FaceTime them 10 minutes later. Firstly, never FaceTime me. Don't even call me. This doesn't even go for just like people who just told me their fantasies about me. Just in general, just for everyone, don't call me. I'm not answering. <laughs> Unless you're my mother. And then even then, half the time I'm not answering, you know? Like if you call me, I'm going to assume it's an emergency, right? That's the only time I ever get calls. And before I make any call, I will text. It's like I don't knock or ring on doorbells because like, I don't want to do that. That, mm, that terrifies me. I will text you like I'm here. And then I will stand outside even if you don't get my text until you come and open the door. Because what if I'm at the wrong house? That would be so embarrassing. What if I like ring the doorbell and your roommate answers and this is, and it's a stranger? I, that's, no, that's too much. A phone call? No, FaceTime? I don't get people who just use FaceTime all the time. Like that's impressive to me. I could never, I could never. I do use FaceTime. Obviously I live overseas from where all my friends and family are, but like, oh, it's wild to me that you just casually FaceTime someone. Anyway, beside the point, bro. Don't fucking do that. It's one thing to say, oh my God, I used to have a bit the biggest crush on you. And like, that's one thing. But then to be like, and I dreamed about us getting married and having kids and having this life together, like chill out. That's so creepy and so weird. And yeah, if you stopped by her office, a restraining order would show up on your desk the next day because fucking hell guy, learn boundaries, learn boundaries. You, you are not the main character that you think you are, right? Just think about how that may come across. I'm actually a nice guy. No, you're not. Because you crossed some major boundaries without thinking about it. So good job. You made someone really uncomfortable. Okay, so this person posted like a photo, like a mirror selfie in their Snapchat story. And this guy replied, oh my, with like the hot emoji. And then they opened the message and didn't reply. So they said, LMAO, why are people so ungrateful? A simple thank you is not very hard. My guy, I just woke up and then went back to sleep. Calm down. My guy, you do this to me all the time. Okay, and if it bothers you that much, don't slide up. Or don't be a bitch. Here, I'll save that one for you, LMAO. 
Me not saying anything is not me being a bitch. Grow up and stop being entitled. Jesus fucking Christ. So when someone is like, hey, you look nice, you ignoring them, that's not being a bitch, you're bugging. You are not owed a response. And honestly, bro, I just woke up, opened it, went back to sleep for a minute. Absolutely not, but I'm owed respect like any other human. It's just decency, LMAO. Glad we can agree I don't owe you a response. Respect? As you call me a bitch for leaving you on open? It's not that deep, dude. Oh, dude, you bleed that all out the window when you decide to be a cunt. And no, it's not that deep at all. Just mind boggling that you can have someone being nice to you and you just shrug it off. Sounds like you need a reality check, G. Bro, she just opened your message and didn't reply immediately. Like, calm down. Why are you sitting there like staring at it to make sure if it's read or not? Like, I understand that. Like, I do that sometimes too. If I send something that's like anxiety inducing, I'll be like, did they see it? Meh. But if I'm just saying you look good, who fucking cares, right? Like, it's not an emergency. It's not an emergency, you know? Like, sometimes I'll reply to like my friend's stories with like, oh my God, I love your outfit. Oh my God, you look great. I'm not sitting there being like, did they open it? Did they open it? Like, get over it, you know? It's not a pressing matter. She doesn't have to reply. She doesn't have to reply, period, let alone immediately. Like, get over it. People have lives. Being like, you owe me respect. They, she didn't disrespect you. You disrespected her by calling her a bitch for not answering you. And you're like, how dare you disrespect me? She didn't do anything. You literally did nothing. She quite literally did nothing. Owes you respect. You owe her respect, actually. She's just giving you back what you gave her, which was disrespect. She didn't even disrespect you. She's just telling you to fuck off because you're being a dick. Nice guy. I can't get a date. Me, have you tried not convincing her to break up with her boyfriend and not sending her a dick pic? Nice guy. Uh, yeah, I, the unsolicited dick pics and stuff is unreal. And the like, have you tried not convincing her to break up with her boyfriend? So much of this nice guy Reddit is, it's just men being like, I know you have a boyfriend, but like, he doesn't get you like me. I would love you so much more. I would be so much better. Fuck off, it's not the place. She has a boyfriend, leave her alone. You know, if you're in here being like, I treat you better, like, firstly, no, you wouldn't. You are inserting yourself into someone else's life for no reason, right? And like, I don't understand this logic in the sense that like, you think that if hypothetically, this person did leave her boyfriend for you because just cause you went into her DMs and was like, I would love you more. You would trust that she wouldn't do that again. Like, it's like, it's like cheating, right? As soon as someone cheats on you, you have the immediate fear that they're gonna cheat again. Like people who end up dating their, like the person they had the affair with. I'm like, surely now you just expect them to have an affair with someone else. Like both of you, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's so odd to me. Um, It's not your place to tell someone to break up with their boyfriend. And also the, the dick pic thing is unreal. Like why, why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? I remember like one time I messaged, I like met this guy on Tinder. We messaged like four times and then I think he added me on Instagram or whatever because I never opened Tinder and I was like, it's easier on Instagram. This is how I often do it, you know? And then the first thing he did was literally send me a video of him jacking off. And I was like, what the fuck, dude? What the fuck? And he's like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. I'm like, what did you, how did you think this was gonna go? I'm at the gym right now, bro. Like out of nowhere, no conversation, nothing. Just like, yeah, this seems like a good idea. And then you're trying to be like, oh, I didn't know, you know, I'm actually a nice guy. No, you're not. That's like straight up sexual harassment. You're like, but I'm a nice guy. No, you're not. Don't ever fucking do that to anyone. Ever. And then I never gave anyone my Instagram or Snapchat ever again because fucking hell, no. Some women have a hard time appreciating men. Those women tend to focus on what isn't right instead of what is. So those females will criticize the 10% that isn't working perfectly and ignore the 90% that worked. And that 90% was way more than you would have had otherwise. Just imagine any time that man did anything for you, you treated it like a gift and expressed lots of appreciation. Remember appreciation is the fuel that motivates a man to want to do more. Or you can just be a good person 100% of the time. That's kind of what I look for in a partner. It's someone who's nice to me and respects me 
100% of the time because someone who respects me 90% of the time and then disrespects me for 10% of the time is not a good partner because you should always respect and love your partner. Always. If you have a disagreement, whatever, you should always respect your partner. Always. There's no if, buts, and maybes. If you are disrespectful and you talk down to me or you manipulate me or you coerce me or you guilt trip me, etc. Unacceptable. Ever. You can't do that. I'm sorry. I will focus on the 10% that you're bad because that completely negates the 90% that you're good because like, no, not tolerating that. And you shouldn't either. Okay. Everyone, if you are in a relationship that you convince yourself it's 90% good, but like 10% of the time they make you miserable, not worth it. You should be with someone who makes you happy or at the very least like neutral 100% of the time, right? They should make you happy most of the time. And then other times there should never be bad emotions. You should never feel miserable because of your partner. You should never feel disrespected because of your partner. You should never feel guilt or shame because of your partner. Even if it is only 10% of the time, that's a lot of the time, okay? Never. Because if it's 10% of the time, that's one and a quarter months per year that they are making you miserable. That's that's a lot, yeah? That's a, that's a lot of time. One and a quarter months of the year, your partner is making you miserable. That's not cool. That's not okay at all. That shouldn't happen, period. If your partner is disrespecting you, making you feel guilt, shame, whatever, leave. I know that's easier said than done. Um, there's a whole process to that, but I guess get a support system. Um, like, just talk to yourself, all right? Sit there and just like realize that you deserve better. And if your partner is saying this to you, shit, like, it's good 90% of the time though. You can't hate me for te- fucking run as fast as you can. Genuinely, because it's definitely much lower than 90%. It's absolutely. 90% is just a made up number and you are there. It's absolutely much, much worse than that. And you've just convinced yourself it's more. So this is coming from real life experience for this exact conversation. Like fucking get out. I know that it's hard to see sometimes. I know that it's really easy to ignore because admitting, admitting abuse is really difficult. One of the things that makes it so hard to leave an abusive relationship is that Acknowledging that you are miserable is really hard. You don't want to acknowledge what you've endured. You don't want to come to terms with that. So you kind of convince yourself that, hey, it's good 90% of the time. It's not, for starters. And like, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. You are better off alone. Genuinely, and I mean that 100% of the time, if you are spending 10% of your relationship miserable, not worth it. And you are better off alone. And I believe in you. Okay. Here is a text conversation. I'm sorry, I can't focus. I'm a little horny, but I won't let it affect anything. Um, okay, I didn't really want to hear that. Sorry, I'm just being honest. How's your day so far? My day was good until you sent me that message. So, yeah. Oh, I said I was sorry already. I was just in the wrong headspace and I wanted to let you know. Being in the wrong headspace is not an excuse to send someone an unsolicited sexual comment when we are having a normal conversation. I said, I'm sorry. I just wanted to be honest with you. I didn't want to hide it. It would have been better if you just hit it, to be honest. Like, do I care if you're horny? I was having a normal conversation with you until you hit me up with unsolicited information. I told you before, I'm not the type of girl who you can just send this to anytime without asking if it's okay. You did it without my consent and it made me very uncomfortable. You're being too traumatic. It's just a small mistake, that's it. You did the exact thing I told you not to. You'll be 25 this year. You should know not to send shit like that to girls because of course it's going to turn them off. Anyway, I'll go now because I don't want to waste any more brain cells trying to teach you basic human decency. Okay, I feel offended now. You're really getting this twisted. I'm mature, headstrong, and one of the nicest men out there. I've treated you like a goddess so far. And when I make a small mistake, admit it, and even apologize for it, you just get to be abusive. I think we're not on the same page. I need some time. Yeah, saying you're horny in the middle of a safer work conversation is you being nice after I told you countless times that I don't feel comfortable with it this early on. You break my boundaries and then you play the victim. Okay, bud. Best of luck. You see, that's why you're single. 
aren't you single too? Not for long. You'll probably die alone. Bro. <laughs> oh my God. Any, I'm sorry, any guy who says, I treat you like a goddess. Red flag. That's such a big red flag. Cause no, what does that mean? No, you fucking don't. Get out. Leave. I'll treat you like a goddess. No, red flag. Red flag. Wee woo, wee woo, wee woo. Get out. Everybody fucking book it. Don't trust any guy who says that. Or even I'll treat you like a queen. I don't trust that shit either. All right. Absolutely not. Maybe those are trauma points for me, but they're trauma points for a fucking reason, right? Fucking book it. Run as fast as you can if a man says that to you, especially in this context where you're like, you did something that made me really uncomfortable. And they're like, I treat you like a goddess. Clearly fucking not. You're like, I treat you really well other than when I don't want to. Like, so you don't then. Fuck you, actually. Don't send people unsolicited shit. Don't break people's boundaries. I apologize, it's too late for that. You broke a boundary that she had clearly set and then you told her she was stupid for having the boundary in the first place. Like, fuck you, bro. Respect people and understand that, like, just understand people don't like that shit, you know? Like, be a decent person. The end being like, this is why you're single. Bro, you're single too. Yeah, but you're gonna die alone. No. She seems like a very reasonable person who is like good at communicating boundaries, which is a skill that I envy, um, honestly. Being able to communicate and hold boundaries, that's something that I, I envy. And that is a like desirable trait in a partner, to be completely honest. You know, someone who violates boundaries versus someone who respects and sets boundaries, there's a really clear winner of who is the more ideal partner. And it's not you, sir. Yeah, no one wants to date someone who violates boundaries. Sorry, but like fucking hell. This video has been a little bit on the shorter side, um, but I do find nice guy videos to be a tiny bit triggering sometimes. So I am going to stop here um, because I don't really want to go through any more of these. <laughs> I hope that you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. A massive thank you to my Sprout and Above patrons whose names are up on the screen right now. And a huge, huge thank you to my Kiwi Cat patrons. Harry, Bobby, Sparrow, Josh, Mandy, Ikazel, Jessica, Eldo, Danielle, Anoli Like Cannoli, Elias, Apollo, Taylor's Trying, Boston, Chris, and Amelia. I love and appreciate you all so, so much. Thank you so much for joining. If you would like to become a patron, you go to patreon.com slash savvycat or click the top link in the description. For as little as one pound a month, you get my videos a day early as well as podcasts a week early. And then for three pounds and up, you get things such as outtakes, bonus mini podcasts, live streams, vlogs, and more. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, the Queer Kiwi, and Twitter, that Queer Kiwi. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. I hope that you enjoy the rest of your day. Stay safe. Keep fighting. I love you. Mwah. When you close your eyes.